Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio coming from the frozen tundra of Texas. We're in the grips of a cold snap this state hasn't seen in years and years. Uh, and so I have no power. So my camera is running on batteries right now. So I'm going to do the intro here. I want to add some things to my Etsy store and I've been doing some watercolor painting while I have no power so I thought what I would do is show you what I've painted and then talk about it for the Etsy store so stay tuned okay so a couple weeks ago I cleaned out one of my desk drawers because well actually two of them I did the video and uh this is my white paper shame. <laughs> These are all my leftovers. I even have the $1 little thingies from Dollar Tree inside a much larger basket that has bigger pieces in it. So in order, to, because I can't buy anything this year and I don't want to waste my watercolor paper on a small project that I'm just playing around with, I thought what I would do is go to the white cut up paper basket and pull out some strips of paper some blocks of paper there's all kinds of mishmash of papers in here the only thing that's not in here is watercolor paper I have that in a separate basket because I save those leftovers to do um, some watercolor uh, lessons with uh, um, from different sites so what I'm doing is I'm picking out heavier cardstock strips and then this is what I'm going to use to paint on. Oh, and uh, did I mention I cleaned out the cardboard drawer too? <laughs> okay, so this is basically the easiest way I know how to um, paint flowers, which I love drawing flowers and I love painting flowers, but I'm not really a good abstract painter but I learned that I could do kind of abstracty sort of flowers like this one right here. Uh, so this is what I'm going to show you how I do, and it'll be similar to this. N no, two, no two look exactly alike. All right, so I'm using my Korean Shihan watercolors, and I'm using the Red Violet, number 419. And a paint, let's see, what's this paintbrush? Uh, Nichols Royal and Nickel Royal, I don't know, whatever it is. Anyway, it's something I bought at Michael's. So I'm just going to take my tip and make a semicircle. And then I'm going to press down and swish. And I've seen this, uh, people paint like this lots and lots and lots of times so this is not a technique that's exclusive to me lord knows i don't know anything about watercolors except for i enjoy them sometimes i think the more you know the more dangerous you are so maybe ignorance really is bliss <laughs> so um so i'm just kind of doing little swirls and this is not really a known to man sort of flower oh i got extra hair on there this is not a known to man sort of flower, so I'm just kind of winging it here. And I don't really care either. To be honest with you, I, oh, there's a dog. I don't care that it's not fantastic. I, I just am killing time while the power's off, which believe me, is not that much. I mean, it's, it's a fun, but <laughs> I'd rather have the power back on. So I want to make it a f kind of a full head. And I didn't get good coverage here. So I'm going to go back over it. Up there. And then I may do a little blob down here. Now I bought some on the... Uh, well, I don't want to say encouragement. But, you know, friends tell friends other cool stuff that they're buying. And so when my friend Peg Robinson talked about buying a set of gouache paints that were next to nothing on um, on Amazon. You know, I ran and nearly broke my neck trying to get there to order that set of gouache paints. 
So let me get my set of gouache out here. Um, I can't tell you what brand. I'm sure I can find it on Amazon, and I will link it down below. But I think it cost me like eight or ten dollars for this set. And the thing about Sorry about the interruption. The power just came back on, so I had to turn the TV down because I was watching a show on uh, called Billions. Used to, it was on prime time. Um, as I was saying before, I was interrupted by crying at the door. Um, I was watching a show on prime called Billions. It's about this greedy stockbroker. I think it's a really good show. Anyway, so... It was on full blast in here while I was painting, and I had to make sure I turned it down while I was filming. All right, so where I left off is this thing of gouache um, was probably, I think I paid 8 or $9 for it. And the thing that is really cool if you like this is gouache feels like liquid chalk to me. Does that make sense? You know, it the colors don't, you can't see through them very well. And, for, and what I do is I, I take it as close to the color as the watercolor I used, close, and I fill it in in places where I need a little more depth. And sometimes it changes the color of the flower. Sometimes it makes it nice. If I, uh, where's my daisy? Hang on a second. I have to get my daisy wheel out. Where is my daisy wheel? This is interesting. Oh, right there on the desk on the side. Um, sometimes I take the gouache and mix it with a lot of water. Even though it's opaque, um, I use it to fill in places for a little, little more color. And I might even mix some watercolor and gouache together if I like it. All right, there's this. So I like the, the two kinds of paint mixed together, the gouache and the watercolor. Um, and then I'm going to do the stem as soon as the dogs stop growling at the door. Okay. So, I think what I'm going to do next, let's see, what is this paintbrush on? Is this a Master's Touch? Yeah, the Master's Touch 8 round. I don't know anything about these. I'm just reading it off the thing, <laughs> off the body of the paintbrush. All right, so let's see. I like a green. So, my favorite green is uh, olive green, sap green, yellow green, and... Um, there's a difference between Daniel Smith's sap green and the Shihan uh, Korean paint sap green. The sap green from Daniel Smith has a little more pigment in it, so it's kind of a darker green. Not quite olive and past the yellow green. It's a lovely shade of green for leaves. So I just take it, see, you know, you always have this mess here. And for a person who likes control over her art, this made me kind of crazy in the beginning, but I'm used to it now, so. All right, so I take whatever's left over on here and I mix the uh, sap green in there for my stem and my leaves. And since, whoops, and since I don't want to make the stems really long on here because they don't necessarily make sturdy stickers or sturdy things, and I've been cutting them out by hand because I do not have a automatic cutting machine. And because I'm not buying anything this year, I can't buy one. Boo! So, let's see. Let's try... What's this one? Oh, there goes the dog. Angle Sharp. Gosh, I'm having a hard time reading it. Uh, Three-eighths of an inch. 9.5 millimeter. It's Princeton brush. I have no idea where I got this from. You know, I just buy brushes because I look at the angles. I don't really care where they come from, I guess. Although I would love Kalinsky brushes just because I could say, oh, oh, look at that. I have a Kalinsky. All right, so I'm just going to press down and up. And then load this. 
press down and up. And if it goes into the pink of the flower, I don't really care. I think it gives a little more character. Sometimes I will go back over it again to fill it in to make it a little bit darker. So I feel like I'm getting my bang for my buck, my colors. I should go back in, kind of give it a little once over again. There we go. So, you know, it's nothing complicated. I make it more complicated by futzying around with it, you know? I'm my own worst enemy. So I'm going to set this side and I'm going to let it dry. Okay, not sure the dogs will not bark. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> my husband's not home and I'm here alone with three dogs. So <laughs> at any time it could break out into mass barking hysteria. All right, so let's see. Let's do a flower in a different color. Maybe you should do like uh, this one is called... Jeez, I can't even see it. Imperial Purple. All right, because I have this smudgy here, I'm going to go down here and do it. And this is the round brush. It makes really good strokes. I really like this brush. I wished that I had more. But... Got to work with what I got this year, so got to make it work. And all I'm doing is just swishing back and forth. Lord knows other people do better at this than I do because I'm kind of a beginner. But boy, is it fun, you know? I mean, I just... And for me, it's not about perfection for this because I just think it's fun. <laughs> I really enjoy it. And that's about all I'm going to do this one. I'm And when this dries up a little more, I might put some gouache in there. I have to look to see if I need purple gouache. Oh, look. <gasps> purple gouache. So I know it looks blue on the camera, but it really is a purple. It's a deep purple. So I think what I might do, because it's so deep, I might take this little brush, and I don't know what this one is. Extra small round uh that's all it says uh i can't one p i don't know anyway it's a little teeny brush i have one that it's got a longer i have some other brushes that i've never even broken out to use yet what's this one princeton one quarter inch dogger look at that it's still perfect inside there and I can't bear to mess it up. So I'm not going to. <laughs> um, so I think I'll take my gouache. Gouache is just, like I said, like a liquid chalk to me. I don't know. I need to make it more liquidy here. I want to fill in. This is too, this is, the white's too stark. So I need to fill that in a little bit with some gouache. And yes, the watercolor is going to smear a little bit, but frankly, I don't really care. All right, now let's do the green. But this time, I think... Oh, this time I think I'm going to use... Well, no, shoot. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so why is this diff different than any other day when I paint? <laughs> Oh, let's not use wash. Let's use my green compilation of paint here. Make it more wet because it's starting to dry up a little bit. I'm doing now. And I'm going to do it all the way to the bottom. Um, usually, let me put myself a piece of paper under here so that I don't spend all day after doing this cleaning up my mat. I'm always out of frame, so I have to keep looking up. I want my leaf to turn a little bit. Not every leaf goes straight up and down. As a matter of fact, a lot of these leaves just don't do much of anything. There we go. That gives a little more character. 
All right, so I'm going to wait for these two to dry, and then I'll be back to finish the rest. Okay, so I let these dry a little. Then I take any kind of a pen. Well, these are both the same brand. Any kind of pen that's a 0.1 to do the doodling, the major doodling on the flowers. So I'm going to fast forward. I, I'm going to do it silent since the dogs are barking constantly. I don't want to keep turning the video on and off. So I'm going to doodle and fast forward through that. Okay, so I did the dueling on both of these. One's a little different than the other. I did fill in with some lines on this. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but I like the stem with the lines. I'm not sure I like the flower with the lines. This one, uh, to me, there's a few too many lines in here. But you know what? It's just a flower. I can make more because Lord knows I have enough scrap white paper. So after I get done with that, then I usually cut around them. And I leave a little bit of white, not a lot, but just enough. And then after I do that, I scan them and I'm going to put them on a tulip page in my Etsy store where there's nothing but, you know, these freestyling kind of tulips on the page. And then I will load those into the Etsy store and um, you can have some flowers. So. I had flowers set aside on my desk that I did, let me put it this way, well, let me go back, there we go, um, that I did the other day, and I scanned them, and I printed them off to see what they would look like for me. Now, oh, I left the originals on the scanner. Anyway, so um, the color, if you do this on watercolor paper and you're not happy with it as dark or whatever you want, it would be really good if you printed these on watercolor paper. Then you could go over and add more shading according to what you like on top of what I've done. And you wouldn't have to do a whole lot of painting to them. So there is miscellaneous flower sheet number one for the Etsy store. And so far, I have... Let me turn this upside down so you can see these. I have these four tulips for the tulip page and then I will be doing more because I want to make sure you get a whole sheet of them in case you need a variety or what I might do is I have others that I've done I might do a miscellaneous sheet if I don't have enough to fill up a whole tulip sheet I'll give you a little bit of greenery here if you want to cut these apart, I might do individual leaves on here so that you can do individual leaves. Uh, I'm out of camera, um, out of frame. Let me, let me move stuff around here. I might um, put some leaves on here so that you can cut stuff apart and put leaves where you want them. And let me screw these out of the way. I did some potted plants. For those of you who might like a little potted plant sticker for your day planner or, you know, you like to put a little potted sticker 
a potted plant sticker somewhere on your uh, mini junk journals or your glue books. Okie do. So that's it for me for today. Thank you for joining me despite all the dog rigmarole <laughs> and the power being off. I do appreciate it. And please go visit my Etsy store. I have stencils. I have tons of digital downloads. I have some Coptic stitch books. I have a little bit of everything in there. I would appreciate your patronage. Since I don't have a Patreon page, it'd be great if um, I could make money off of these. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a warm day. <laughs>